Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome to the Gaming 4. Today in this dev kit tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create objects and how to use the selection tool that goes along with those. So just like before, uh, you know, let's press tilde and let's actually get into the editor itself and let us get this selection tool that we're going to be using. So first of all, the selection tool is found in the Windows tab and then you go down to Tools and it's the one right in the middle and actually have it right here on the side. So we're going to be using this to move around the objects that we want to place and you know just do normal stuff with them. Also we need to find the objects we want to use and uh, for this we actually use the asset browser. So the asset browser is right down here for me but you can also find it in the panels, uh, windows panels and then right near the top the second one as the asset browser window. Now of course I'm just going to leave mine down here and that's where I'm going to work with it. So uh, let, let's start finding some of these objects. Now you'd think it's kind of self-explanatory but for those of you who don't exactly know how the asset browser works essentially these are folders that you can actually find in the file system of your computer and inside each of these are you know different sort of things that uh, you can create with the dev kit editor essentially just by clicking on them. So we're going to be focusing on objects today I think we can go over some of the other stuff in the future but uh, for now I'm just going to go to core objects and then from here we've got large medium small we also have Mookie I'm not exactly sure what Mookie stands for but there's just some randomized other you know different objects in there and I'm thinking I'm gonna work with the medium object today so if you go inside the medium you see that they've been broken down into other different types of categories and I'm gonna go into business and then let's work on maybe like a canister so in order to spawn the item all you have to do is click right here and if you guys notice if I click there again it'll spawn another one in the very center of the viewport now I'm only gonna work with one right now because there's no point in you know having multiples of them and once you click on it uh, which you should if you've got it uh, if you got the selection tool up you should be able to click on this object and start moving it around like normal now you can also move these around using the E key it'll move it to wherever your cursor is pointed at and also if you check the top left up here you can see some information about it for example the position which you guys can see changes depending on where I move it also we've got the scale and the rota rotation here I'm actually not sure if the rotation is working as of yet um, it's kind of glitched for mine it doesn't show any values but uh, we can definitely change the rotation still so it's not that big a deal so by default you're gonna have the translate tool selected and essentially the hot key for that is Q now you know you can do normal stuff with this uh, you can move it up and down uh, back and forth um, you can move it by plane um, this is a kind of a neat tool you can move it by uh, side to side just along the ground or you can move it on any of the other planes you know just up and down and side to side or up and down side to side like this that's just an alternate way of moving it around generally people usually use these arrow keys but if you want to use the sort of square things as well um, that definitely works in terms of moving it around so the second tool that you can use to manipulate objects is uh, the hotkey of W and this is the rotate tool now this is the tool that doesn't exactly have uh, information up here on the top left I think it's probably a bug with the uh, dev kit right now I'm not sure why it's not up there there should be some sort of uh, sort of scale of rotation how much you've rotated it and stuff like that but maybe that'll be something that shows up in the future essentially how you use this tool is you've got all the three axes uh, X Y and Z and you just click on one of the lines it'll highlight yellow for the one that you've selected and then you can rotate it on that axis. now also if you guys notice uh, I, I'm holding control right now it's actually using snap rotation and where you change the snap rotation amount is over here on the top right now along with the snap rotation there's also snap position and that is uh, you use that with the translate tool which is high key Q and it works about the same way you just hold control and moving it around and you can see this nice little scale bar and you move it by specific increments and as you guys can see if we change the snap position up here it'll actually increase or decrease the increment that it shifts whenever we hold control and move one of the arrows so the last main tool that you can use with the selection tool is the scale tool and the hotkey for that one is R. So the scale tool also works pretty much like you'd expect, uh, pretty much just like the normal editor. Uh, it, you drag out these ends and it scales it in a certain direction and you can pretty much just modify how large it is in general. You can also drag the middle out and that'll just scale it uniformly so it'll just make it bigger overall instead of bigger on one plane. Now there is as well a scale snap so if you hold control 
uh, it'll snap to scale, which I was doing right there. But uh, the issue is the scale was really small, so let's make it maybe like two, and then that'll actually be pretty noticeable. And so as you guys can see, it's uh, incrementing by like two meters, I guess. So that's pretty much how the scale tool works. Uh, once again, it's the hot key of R, and that's most of the tools. Now, if you guys notice, there is surface offset, surface align, and local space. Now, surface offset's actually pretty cool. It has to do with how it places when you use the E key. If you put 10 at surface offset, what it's going to do is it's going to move the item to the spot that you're hovering over, except it's going to move it 10 uh, sort of units upwards. So if we make it 30, it's going to go even higher. At this point, you know, it's going pretty far up above the area that you're selecting. Now, you know, I'm, not, I'm not really sure that it has many uh, useful applications that come to mind right now, but I'm sure it could be very useful in some certain circumstances. Actually, there's a really cool circumstance that uh, it's it's very useful for. So if you you make the surface offset like pretty small, and we're gonna have to grab a new object here. Let's just uh, grab a large house, something like an apartment building. It doesn't really matter. But uh, what you can do is if if let's say that this is at zero, you know by default it's gonna be at zero. Well, when you place this apartment down, the grass is going to be glitching through the floor. And that's one of the biggest annoyances as a map maker is just, you know, trying to avoid that grass through the floor. Well, one way that you can fix this is if you change the surface offset to 0 .0001. And if you place this item again, that 0 .001 that it's above the ground will actually decrease the amount of grass that comes through the floor. Now, of course, you don't have to decrease it that much. Like, I think you can still see it a little bit. So if you just decrease it even more, it's just going to keep getting better and better. So 0 .001 seems to be a good sweet spot. You know, you can't see any of the grass through the floor. And it's placed pretty much perfectly so that the doorway is like right next to the ground. So that would be one good use of using the surface offset option. So an, one of the other tools on here is the local space. And pretty much this is just a checkbox. You know, you can turn it on and off. As you guys can notice, the only thing that really is changing is the arrow colors here. And so uh, let, let me demonstrate sort of what it does. So if you turn it like turn the building or whatever something off a little bit and you go back to the uh, Q tool which is actually the translate tool uh, pretty much what's going to happen is the axes that you actually move the object on are going to stay the way they were automatically. So you can only move it up down right left something like that. Well, what if you want to be able to move it in this sort of diagonal a angle that it's sort of facing? That's where you're going to use the local space. And this is pretty much the difference between global and local, as in the normal editor. Uh, I don't know if you've messed around with them very much. But if you have, this tool is pretty much the same thing as that. So it can make it uh, pretty useful for aligning things different ways and moving them around in different ways you know there's just small differences that could really help in the long run now coming to the last tool we've got the surface align um, I really am not sure what this one's supposed to do uh, you would think that it would align whatever object it is to the surface and that's what it that's what you really would think it would do but as far as I can tell it sort of just randomizes the object in a weird kind of way and I'm really not sure why it does this so if any of you know what this tool is supposed to be used for or this option is please let me know in the comments I'm pretty confused about it really and hopefully you know we'll figure out what it does in the future and one of the last things I want to mention is that when you do place down an object uh, there are a few values in the top left that you can actually change yourself including the position so if you want to get the positions really precise you can completely change it with these values up here and that includes you know negative works here um, and you know you can just mess with all of this stuff even the height and all that so that's another way to actually use the transform tools probably a little more exact if you're going to be doing it, that sort of thing also you can do similar things like that with the scale you would be like 1.2 and like stretch things a little bit and that's just going to be something you can do to manipulate the object as well now as I mentioned before the rotation does seem to be missing here you would think that there would be a rotation it looks like it's supposed to be a drop down but I, it's just not showing up right now so I don't know what's up maybe that might be an issue with my dev kit but if if it is an issue with my dev kit and if you guys can see that please let me know 
Um, otherwise, I would expect you just use it similar to the position and the scale tools where you can just input custom values for how it's rotated. So anyway guys, that's it. pretty much it for this unturned dev kit tutorial. Um, hopefully this covers another set of tools that are pretty useful to you guys. Um, also, if you've got any more comments about what you want me to do inside of the dev kit, please let me know. I will be looking into those and hopefully doing those in the future. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe if you want to see some. I will see you.